Students, this lab is called measuring acid strength. It's a simple procedure, but conceptually, it's really interesting. It's a simple procedure to do, I should say, but it's conceptually uh, really interesting to think about how it works. So uh, there are a series of unknown acids that you're going to test and titrate and we're going to be able to identify the unknown acid by its Ka value. There was a selection for your classmates of four unknown acids. I picked one of them, unknown acid A. In the procedure, it asks us to measure out on a scale between 0.15 and 0.25 grams. So the acid comes in powder form. So I'm going to take a whey boat set it on an electronic scale, hit the zero button, and then I'm gonna start scooping the unknown acid until I get roughly 0.2 grams. Perfect. So I've got 0.28. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit back out. That's more like it, 0.21 grams of an unknown acid. Now I'm gonna pour, I have two 100 milliliter beakers. I'm gonna pour the powder into one of the two beakers, being sure to transfer completely. And then I'm gonna take a bottle of deionized water and I'm gonna squirt that into the beaker. And I'm gonna, as I do this, I'm gonna swirl, swirl, swirl. I've gotta make sure that this acid is nice and dissolved. You can use a glass stirring rod to help the swirling and the dissolving. A couple more swirls and we're almost all the way there. I'm gonna add the rest of the water up to the 50 milliliter mark. So I'm, I'm watching the markings on the side of the beaker. I'm at 40 right now and now we're at 50. So I've got 50 milliliters of a solution of an unknown acid. Now here's where it gets interesting. I want to evenly divide the solution between the beaker that we just made and the beaker that we haven't touched yet. So what I'm gonna do to make sure I transfer exactly half of it is use a grad cylinder and measure out 25 milliliters. That's half of 50, right? So I've got 25 milliliters in the grad cylinder. I'll pour that into the second beaker. The first beaker still has exactly 25 milliliters of the solution in it. Now, here's where it gets interesting. One of these two beakers, I'm not going to touch. The other beaker, I'm going to titrate. I'm going to add some 0.1 molar uh, sodium hydroxide to it. So let's say this beaker we set aside and don't touch. This beaker we're going to titrate. And in order to titrate, if you remember from the acid-base titration lab, we'll need an indicator molecule. We'll use phenylthaline again. We'll add about three or four drops of phenylthaline. And then we're going to start adding 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Now, this time, unlike with the acid-based titration lab where we had the long skinny burette tube, you don't need to measure the amount of sodium hydroxide. You just need to titrate it until you're at a faint pink color. So once you're at the equivalence point, you're good to go. I'm gonna put a white background behind the beaker so you can help me watch for a faint pink color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of base. And you'll notice there was an immediate pink and then it went away. A little bit more. And then it swirls away. So we're just gonna go slowly here. Once we get a faint pink color, we know that we'll be done. Oh, we're so close here. Just a little bit. So close. There we have it. We've got a nice 
pink color, maybe it's a little dark. Let's add a little deionized. There we go. Okay. So we've titrated one of the beakers and we left this beaker untouched. Now, get this. We're going to add the untouched beaker into the one that was titrated. And as you might expect, it went back to colorless. So it's no longer pink. Now the last little bit, and it's a simple, simple procedure here. We're gonna take a pH meter and we're gonna stick it in this um, halfway titrated solution. Exactly half of it was titrated. The other half we didn't touch. So um, we just need a pH reading. One moment, please. Okay, now we're gonna take a pH reading for the half neutralized solution. I've got a pH meter. I'm just gonna turn it on. Insert the probe into the solution. And we get a pH reading of 5.9, 5.9, which is what you would expect for an acidic solution, or at least it, makes, it passes the common sense check because the pH is below seven. So at a pH of 5.9, That's the only piece of data we need. So what we're gonna do now is turn our attention to the analysis questions. And believe it or not, this lab is pretty straightforward. Um, we're gonna consider that 5.9 reading to be sufficient for both trials one and two. Okay, we're only gonna do one trial here. If our pH reading is 5.9, and in the analysis question, question two, it says, take 10 raised to the power of your negative pH value. So that means take the number 10 and raise it to a power that is equal to the negative pH. So in our case, negative 5.9. Punch that into your calculator and write down the result. So if I type in five to the negative 5.9, I get 1.26, I'm gonna round here, times, don't forget to read to the end of the calculator, times 10 to the negative sixth. Your answer to question two is your weak acids Ka value. Based on the table that's shown next to question three, which unknown acid did you have? Circle or highlight the closest option. Now the, the Ka values listed in the table range from one times 10 to the negative second for sodium bi or potassium bisulfate, all the way to 6.2 10 to the negative eighth for sodium phosphate. Remember the exponent is really the important part here. So, if you look in the table for something with the exponent 10 to the negative six, that would put us, our closest guess here is potassium hydrogen phthalate. And then question four, explain why this lab procedure works. Reread the background and overview if necessary. Answer in three to four complete sentences. Students really do reread or read for the first time if you haven't already the background and overview. It explains why doing what we did, which is to take 50 milliliters of, of a solution, split it in half, titrate one of the uh, half of the solutions, and then just dump it into the other one. And you end up with a half titrated solution at that halfway point. So unlike the equivalence point in a, a full acid-based titration, at the halfway point, the concentration of hydrogen equals the concentration of the conjugate base. And, and that's why the pH is equal to the pKa value, which is helpful for identifying the, the weak acid. Anywho, just reread the background and overview. Thanks, good luck on the report.